Thanks very much, Gilbert. Uh, and, and thank you to everybody for joining this presentation. Um, so yeah, as Gilbert mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Nanalysis Scientific. Um, we're poised to be the global leader in portable MRI machines, as well as NMR spectrometers for industrial and healthcare applications. So 11 years ago, when uh, I was investigating this opportunity, a friend of mine uh, called me up one day and said, Sean, I would like to meet you at a local university research center and show you something. So he took me to this facility in Calgary, Canada, where I'm from, introduced me to a bunch of very interesting scientists and showed me a very large machine that I've depicted on the left side of my slide here. And I said, oh, that's interesting, Michael, you know, what is that? And he said, well, that's called a nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer. It's the most important analytical technique in pretty much all industries, whether it's pharma, whether it's mining, energy, law enforcement, and it's capable of measuring how many molecules are in any substance of interest. As long as you can get your sample um, in, a, in a five millimeter diameter glass tube and put it into the magnet, which I've depicted on the left, um, it can analyze anything. And it's the, it's the type of instrument that everybody in research and manufacturing relies upon the most. And I said, well, that's interesting. So what does this have to do with our meeting today? Um, and he said, well, there's many problems with this machine. Um, they're very large, you know, they weigh more than your car. They require liquid helium to keep the superconducting magnets cool. They're unsafe to use, they're complicated. Uh, they can't be used where they're needed. Uh, you must send your sample to a, a special room and a gatekeeper, and maybe three days later, you'll get back your result. So um, I think we should build the business, he said to me, 11 years ago around miniaturizing this type of instrument. And I was fascinated by this. Um, we went to lunch together and I asked him more questions. We started to uh, talk about our intellectual property plan and, and the team we would put together and how long it would take us to get a product to market and so on. And we decided to do it. And then just before we left our lunch meeting 11 years ago, he said, Sean, there's one more thing I want to show you. And he showed me a picture of this. And I said, well, I know what that is. That's an MRI machine. You know, they're in all hospitals and they're widely used. They're very powerful. They're safe. Um, and he says, yes, um, an MRI machine is the same as an NMR machine from the perspective of the fundamental math and physics and even a lot of the hardware. Um, it's just a different application. So if we can miniaturize uh, the machine on the left, we will also be able to miniaturize the machine on the right. And then we will be able to revolutionize the healthcare industry and how it uses MRI machines. So I got very excited and we shook hands and we decided to form the company 11 years ago. Since then, we've been on this incredible journey to build a global, fully vertically integrated scientific instrumentation company from scratch. In other words, we did not start from anything. We developed all the IP in-house. I hired some very smart scientists and moved them to Canada when we started our business 11 years ago. And then along the way, we've just hit all the important milestones that you would need to hit when building a real company. So in about uh, mid 2019, we have had an opportunity to sell our company to a very large NASDAQ listed company, um, but we decided not to, we wanted to stay independent. So I said, okay, to our board and to our shareholders, I wanna go public. And I want to execute an M&A strategy because there's five other specific companies that I want to buy. Everybody was very supportive about that. We were united in our, in our new strategy. Um, and so that's the main reason why we went public on the Canadian Stock Exchange about two years ago. Since then, we've succeeded at integrating our first acquisition, a terrific electronics company in magnetic resonance based in Strasbourg, Europe. And we've also launched a new product. And where our business is right now, it's basically ready to scale. So here's a look at our company today. Uh, we sell our products direct with our own sales force in the United States, Germany, Switzerland, France, Canada. And then in international markets like China and India and Japan, we sell through a, a network of over 45 dealers. We're in a very strong financial position. We're not raising money right now. Uh, we're generating positive cash flow. Um, we are a, a category cr creator in, in, in the portable MRI space, and we have a huge market opportunity. 
here are some of the customers that we sell to. So we sell to the largest uh, companies in the world like, like DuPont, Eli Lilly, and Pfizer. We also sell to very small companies like two-person little biotech startups. We sell to the most famous universities in the world like Oxford University in England, but we also sell to very small community colleges uh, in places like rural India and so on. By the way, where there are no liquid helium trucks driving around to be able to fill superconducting magnets. And we also sell to government labs all over the world. We're way beyond the pre-revenue stage. Uh, we, we've shipped over a hundred units. Um, here's what we sell. So when I say, uh, sorry, I, I meant to say over 800 units. Um, so here's what we sell. Um, the instruments on the left are magnetic resonance analyzers, or if you prefer NMR spectrometers. Um, and they can very accurately analyze everything from food to petrochemicals, uh, new drugs being developed by companies like Pfizer. And then the product on the, on the right is still a magnetic resonance product, but it's sold into the imaging market. So now we sell to um, preclinical and clinical um, imaging companies. So on an OEM basis, we don't sell direct to the end user. Um, and we're starting to have a lot of success, especially in markets like China, where the, um, you know, the, the, the companies like Philips, GE, and Siemens are starting to become uh, disruptive, disrupted by new MRI technologies. And we see ourselves playing a very active role in the future disruption of MRI machines so that they can be made available to everyone all the time, very inexpensively and with higher quality, you know, connected to the cloud, driven by AI and deep learning, um, and part of you know uh, the new personalized healthcare system that is going to change the world really in the next five to ten years. We will also be offering consumer uh, a consumable based business and also software as a service business in the future. But today um, it's a classic greenfields a uh, capital equipment opportunity uh, at very high gross margins. So today our gross margins. Um, at our approximately 65%, and we think we can uh, uh, push those higher. So all of our technology is proprietary and developed inside of our facility. Uh, we have three patents grant granted in the United States, and we also file our patents in nine other jurisdictions, including Japan and China. Um, we have five more patents pending. We have an impressive suite of trade secrets in proprietary firmware, software, and hardware. We add a massive amount of intellectual property every single day. And then just as importantly is proprietary manufacturing processes. So our instruments are fully manufactured in our facility in Calgary with about a dozen proprietary processes that protect our technology from being uh, reverse engineered. Um, and so we will, that's part of our uh, IP strategy is to maintain proprietary manufacturing in our facility in Canada. Here's a look at our growth strategy. So we're going to continue to innovate, develop new products, develop new partnerships, uh, grow our direct sales organization, as well as our network of dealers. And that, as I mentioned at the outset, as a public company, we are in a position uh, to um, acquire new companies in a way that's transparent and creates trust with the entrepreneurs that we're acquiring, and then uh, work together to increase the value of our companies uh, over time. So that's an important part of our growth strategy. We feel we can get to critical mass faster uh, by combining M&A uh, and, and organic growth. Um, and then over time, what you're going to see is you're going to see the weighting of our business in terms of revenue and products and customers move from um, magnetic resonance for analysis of substances to imaging. And there'll be very important partnerships that we start to announce in that regard in the near future. And then, of course, one of our, our drivers to create growth for this type of magnetic resonance technology is not just making them smaller, better, um, and more accessible, but also simplifying the output. So on this screen is typical output of a nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer or an MRI machine. And if you have a PhD in chemistry or you're a radiologist, then you can understand this data. 
but customers are starting to tell us that for specific applications, they want simpler output. And so a red light or a green light, or maybe one number. So for example, we have um, a large mining customer called Albemarle, that's a leader in um, lithium mining. And they've told us that they want the output of the instrument on the software to just be one number, percent lithium. So that's an important growth driver for us going forward. And again, on the healthcare side, we, we think that in terms of preventative personalized medicine, that one day that's going to revolutionize uh, the, the way you take care of your body uh, compared to in the past. So um, that's the end of the presentation, except to say that um, we have a tremendously talented and well-educated workforce. Um, and all of our people are shareholders in our company. And so they're tremendously motivated uh, to make us an incredible success in the near future. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Sean. Uh, let's uh, get on with the questions. Uh, one from Tom here in the Chinese feed here. He's asking uh, in the markets, is there any uh, similar portable equipment like these or what's your uh, major competitors in the market space? Yeah, thank you. Um, so we have one uh, Arch competitor. It's a company called Magritech. Um, they're based out of New Zealand um, and we compete against them every single day all over the world. Uh, they're a company that's similar size to us. So, you know, about 80 people, similar revenue as well. You know, we'll do a 20 million uh, in, in sales in this year. So similar size to us, but in terms of the big companies, um, no, they, they are not competitors yet. They have tried to develop competing products, but so far these big companies have failed. Companies like Bruker, um, and so um, it's very difficult to create this type of portable magnetic resonance machine. So next question coming from Reef D. Uh, he's asking, uh, what's your ultimate uh, exit strategy? Is it to be uh, trying to be bought out by a big uh, equipment company? No. So that's a key uh, point is that when I founded the company, Yes, that was the strategy was to get a product to market, prove out a bit of the growth model and then sell to a big equipment company. But our board and our key shareholders who have been with us for 11 years and management are fully united around the concept of remaining independent. So we're a public company today. We're going to continue to graduate to bigger exchanges in Canada and the United States. My vision actually is within a couple of years to off, start offering a dividend to shareholders, but to remain um, innovative and independent uh, in perpetuity. So, so our exit strategy for shareholders is to provide full liquidity on the open market in about the next two years. Okay, next question coming from Max is asking, what's the sales cycle like for the equipment, equipment like this? Three months. Three months, good. And the next question coming from uh, Sarah, I believe. So Sean, anything in the pipeline along the vein of direct to consumer marketed products? Uh, not, in the, not in the near term, but that is a very interesting question and it is definitely part of our vision, right? Um, of course, um, in, in North America and Europe, direct to consumer is a highly regulated uh, market. And so, so far, um, we are kind of staying away um, from selling direct into regulated markets and working through partners, but it's definitely part of our vision. I mean, we believe that small MRI machines, you know, for your head or your fingers or your hands can definitely um, be in many, many places, including uh, for certain types of consumers. Yes. This uh, probably one last question here from Kinsley. Is that King uh, we will continue or always do, we need to do R&D to fine tune your, your products, right? We will always do R&D. We're an innovation company. We will continue to innovate for new products. Uh, absolutely. In terms of the percentage of our overall budget and the percentage of our revenue, we do anticipate that um, that number uh, that we spend on R&D will go down on a percentage basis, but on an absolute basis, um, it will always continue to go up. Great. Uh, so thank you for your time to answer all the questions that we have here today. Sean. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Gilbert. And thank you to everybody else. Have a wonderful day.
You too.